too. Let's bring in uh, Rebecca Walzer. Uh, she is the president of Walzer Wealth Management. Rebecca, um, this sounds like such a great deal for J.P. Morgan Bank. Um, I'm assuming stock prices are continuing to go up, but little banks, the little guys, they go out of business. I mean, they're just getting swallowed up. And it's not just, we're talking about banks specifically, but it's happening to all sorts of big businesses. They're just getting bigger and bigger, squeezing the little mm. guy. Rebecca, mm -hmm. your reaction? Yeah, you're 100% right. And, um, you know, a lot of like, platform uses the word uh, corporatism a lot, but it's really what we would call fascism, right? It's really getting to this yeah. uh, corporate uh, group that only you can only go to Walmart or Target. You can only go to Burger mm -hmm. King or McDonald's. And all of those groups follow the same government rules so that choice is really eliminated. And you're able to do things through private corporations that you can't do because you have prescriptions against doing at the government level. So the public private partnership that is the WEF is the definition of corporatism, fascism. And the whole plan, although uh, Trump escalated the plan, um, he didn't he was doing but he brought things forward too fast for them and that's why we have a lot more choice than we would have otherwise had we still have a lot of small and medium-sized businesses that are still the economic engine of this country which is right. the reason that even Most though in the midst of the chaos we've had small businesses. Joe Biden you're 100 percent right and that's that why Joe Biden sent mm -hmm. What's the message that Joe yeah. Biden sent, Rebecca, in the very first bailout of that bank? Many, many of my financial friends, uh, like yourself, forewarning, the message that's sent to the average bank manager is basically you can screw up everything and nothing's really going to happen. And that's mm. what's sent also uh, to all of the big bank bosses, right? They know they can just buy these banks up and, and, and move on and grow even larger. Um, so really the only person who loses in all of this right is the average american who is going to have many fewer options right in banking right um, costs are going to go up costs will go up um not even to mention what it's doing to our just i want to say monetary culture right you might have a better word than that but tell <laughs> us who really gets hurt in all of this and and what we can do about it if you can think of anything well, there's two things I want to point out. The first thing I want to point out is that we had this bank failing back in March, but they kind of bifurcated it and just talked about Signature and SVP, those two banks, and then sort of just pushed this one to the side. And you'll remember that three large banks gave it about $30 billion of funding back then. That did not succeed. So now we have JP coming in and going to buy it, but JP Morgan is getting a $50 billion loan from the FDIC. So if this doesn't work out for JP Morgan, guess what? Who are the taxpayers on the loop on the hook again? Again, FDIC. So we we can't just keep uh, ba basically, uh, you know, it's like hiding the ball. Where is the ball? Which bank is owned by which bank? So They're good. all right. going to have liquidity issues, and it's all FDIC. You're 100 percent right. And where, what about the debt ceiling, too? The federal government is about to run out of room to continue borrowing money. We are 30-some trillion dollars in debt. Congress has to vote ever so often to continue to raise, I called it a circus tent once, because it's not real. They just keep raising the limit, raising the roof so they can just borrow more, which is ridiculous. Although, Speaker McCarthy says that Joe Biden will not even talk to him about a deal. Watch this. What was your second question? Debt limit. The president still hasn't talked to me. I'm a little like Netanyahu. Mm, so the oh, Democrats want to borrow more. They say the sky will fall and there will be doom and gloom and the U.S. government will default on their debt. But Rebecca, what will really happen here? Will the sky fall like Democrats say it will if we were to draw some lines finally on spending? Well, certainly not, Gina, if we're just drawing lines on spending, Dr. Gina. But if we are not paying our bills, then we do have. I mean, we were already downgraded under Obama in 2011 because we came within three days of the debt ceiling and not being to actually be able to pay those bills for the first time. So Joe Biden took a cue out of his mentor's playbook, which basically said, don't negotiate at all with Republican House. That's not where you need to negotiate. So he has completely disconnected the debt ceiling raise from 
talks around fiscal restraint. And I don't understand why, because the House, which just turned red, obviously turned red in part by because of fiscal responsibility. So that is a conversation that Joe Biden doesn't get to decide whether he has or not, because the House is the power of the purse. And he needs to have that conversation as the leader of the United States. Yeah. Rebecca, I want to go back to these bank closures. Again, we've had three just since March. I mean, we it's just May 1st. Uh, yeah. We just played that ad again that was released by Trump's campaign foreshadowing that we were going to see more bank closures. That was just the other week. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. far we've had three. And in the ad, I think they said five. Um, could we first off two questions? One, what's causing this? And two, could we see more? Great question. So I will just answer it and tell you stimulus and the lack of, in other words, since the global financial crisis in 2008, our Federal Reserve changed monetary policies and they went to something called MMT, Modern Monetary Theory. It's a Keynesian theory, actually out of LSE, which is what I'm a part of, the London School of Economics. But basically, I don't agree with that MMT. MMT says you can print as much as you need to as long as you can collect enough taxes to pay the interest. So we have had a banging economy since 2008, 2009, with some exceptions, because the, the Federal Reserve cut rates to the lowest for the longest amount of time. We had almost a zero mm -hmm. cost of capital, 25 basis point Fed funds rate. And we had a lot of stimulus being pumped into the system. Every system can work with a low cost of capital and a ton of stimulus being pumped in. When you stop pumping in the stimulus and you raise the cost of capital to what it really should be, which is a normalized rate, that's when you have liquidity completely dry up. We are in the middle of a liquidity crisis brought on by the fact that we have had nothing but low cost of capital and stimulus since 2008 for almost 15 years, barring the last uh, 12, 18 months. And that's where we are. And so this is a liquidity crisis, it's not just relegated to banking. It is a liquidity crisis across the globe, across corporations and everybody and it is the uh, beginning of the end of the fiat system as kind of that we've been used to and as we've known wow so I, if i'm hearing you right since the obama era basically is when this all kind of started which would probably make a lot of sense mm -hmm. uh, as we've been going more towards this globalism unfortunately but i want to ask you going back to biden which a lot of people think that obama's kind of still running the show there but yeah. uh biden's new mortgage rule uh that just went into effect today if this just seems i just i can't believe this is a real thing honestly but if you have a high credit score you will pay more in fees to subsidize people who have poor credit scores i mean that sounds like socialism to me yeah uh how is this even able to pass in, in this country? I mean, this is all done in the name of equity. Rebecca, this, this sounds like there's no incentive there for people to want to have a, a high credit score. The whole idea is like, okay, so then I can get accepted for loans. I don't have to pay as high an interest rate. I mean, everything is determined by that number. But now if you get a high number, what? You're just gonna have to pay someone else's debt off? This is like the worst idea ever. Last uh, 20 seconds to you, sorry, running up against the clock. Yes, no problem, really fast. Okay, so basically this is a change, a complete and fundamental change to the way finance works in America and the we should push back. We do not accept what we call CSR, Corporate Social Responsibility for Porn or, or DEI, Diversity, Equity, Inclusion. We do not accept those concepts into finance. This has got to be pushed back on. America, wake up and push back. No, we can't have it here. Wake up, push back, love it. Rebecca Walzer, President of Walzer Wealth Management, thank you for your time.